if there are things that you want in life, if you have bigger dreams and goals, where is your mindset around them? And I think this will illuminate a lot of the thoughts that you might be having that might be helping you, might be sabotaging you. And to really take a look at those, I think it's so important to always be super aware of the thoughts we're having. Your relationship with money matters. I'm Michelle Perkins, and this is the Money and You podcast, where I will be breaking down your relationship with money, offering tough love money tips, and a money dating plan that will focus on lifting the barriers to success to help pave the way for better money practices and increased wealth. It's time to take control to live a limit-free life. It starts today. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Money and You Show. I'm Michelle Perkins, your host, and doing a a short solo show today because I was away this weekend. Some things happened that made me think of you and things I could talk about on the show, and I was just kind of tuned in to money. I was in a beautiful place. I was in uh, Carmel, California, which is beautiful, Uh, and Uh, That whole area, Carmel, Monterey, Pacific Grove, just one of my favorite parts of California. And we took my son up there who is a bit obsessed, well, not a bit, completely obsessed with golf. And of course, there's some of the greatest golf courses in the world up there. And so it was a big treat. He's got a birthday coming. And we thought, well, you know, we'll do this as and go enjoy it ourselves. And so needless to say, when you're up there, you can't help but notice the, the scenery, the real estate, the lifestyle, the whole nine yards. So, of course, money is kind of not uh, <laughs> out of your mind uh, all the time. Uh, it pops in and out, and it made me, made me think, with this show, you know how we talk about your relationship with money. We talk about your money stories. Um, we talk about you know the, the things you say to yourself about money. And as I'm walking through and we're talking about things and we're wondering how much the houses cost and we're wondering what it would be like to live there and, you know, how much the golf is and just a variety of things. We started, well, I, not we, I kept thinking, wow, all kinds of thoughts come into your head as you're all money thoughts and and sort of this narrative around money that you're thinking. So. It was, I thought, you know, this is a great way to test yourself. If you're not quite sure what your money beliefs and thoughts are, um, the subconscious ones, the ones that don't always show up in your daily life because you've created a life that that works, hopefully, and and so you're not constantly having, you know, uh, kind of conflicting money thoughts. But in all honesty, you probably are having some of those because that's what we naturally do. But I thought when you put yourself in a different environment, when you are in a place where, you know, things look different, you're, you're, plus you're relaxed, you're not there working and focusing on, on very specific things, you're just there to kind of relax and wander around and thought you're allowing thoughts to come into your head. Like what money thoughts do you have in a different environment? And I, I really did think this is the experiment everybody should do. They should put themselves in a situation that isn't, maybe it's a little, you know, different for them and see what comes up in terms of money thoughts. It doesn't even have to be a very nice place. It could also be a very, you know, a place you wouldn't want to live and just start thinking, you know, what is coming up for me? How do I see myself fitting in to an environment that is different? And what are some of the money thoughts that are popping into my head? Is it things like, wow, I, you know, I'd love to live here, but I, I just never could. I could never afford this. I could never, you know, um, I, I, whatever it is. I'm not going to try to give you all the thoughts. But I found it to be an interesting exercise. So as you're walking through town or you're, you're looking at things in shop windows or whatever it is that you're doing, um, I, I honestly think it is a good idea to track the thoughts that come into your head, even write them down, because those are good things to think about, to journal on, and to just see if there are things that you want in life, if you have bigger dreams and goals, where is your mindset around them? 
And I think it, this will illuminate a lot of the thoughts that you might be having that might be helping you, might be sabotaging you. And to really take a look at those, I think it's so important to always be super aware of the thoughts we're having. Now, that said, that was like one piece of what I wanted to talk about. So I do think that's a great little exercise for, for a person to do. And you don't have to leave town to do it either. You can, you know, just find different spaces to go into and just mill around and see what thoughts come into your head when you start daydreaming a little about what you might like to have in your life. As I say that, I realize that we are not attaching any dollar values to anything in what I just said. And so this is where I really wanted to talk about vagueness versus specificity when it comes to money. Now, you could talk about that when it comes to your overall life vision, um, you know, what your ideal life would look like, just plain on what you want in life. What do you want for your career? What do you want for, you know, your future financial life? What do you want for um, your relationship life, your health, anything? Um, we tend, I think, to use a lot of very vague terms that are sort of meaningless. And that doesn't really get us anywhere. I mean, it's a, it's an okay start to just think of what you want. Oh, I'd love to have a, a beautiful house in a beautiful town. Okay, what does that mean? I mean, where is this town? <laughs> what does that house actually look like? How big is it? Is it, you know, it, it, what are the specifics? Because without that, and you might not know this, but as you, be, as you continue to set goals and create visions for yourself, you want to keep drilling down to get as specific as possible. And you actually want to start setting some financial goals for such things. And that means not vague goals. That means uh, very specific goals. Could they change? Yes. Do you actually really know 100% what you would need? Probably not. So that's okay. Because when we start attaching dollar values to our goals, they, it, we really have a very specific target to go after. And both subconsciously and consciously, things start happening in that direction to get us closer to the specific goal. And when you start seeing that, it's very powerful. You start feeling like, wow, I can manifest things. I can decide I'm saving $10,000 in the next six months. And as you are focusing on what you're doing, there's your conscious mind reminding you of this and maybe helping you, you know, reserve certain amounts every month or every week or whatever you decide. There's also your subconscious mind telling you, this is the goal, this is where we're headed, this is what we're gonna do with it, or you know, even if it's just we're gonna stick it in a savings account. But the two parts of your brain start working together to both manifest and, you know, pr in a practical sense, make these things happen. So I, I do think we spend a lot of time saying, you know, I really want to have financial security. I really want to have a lot of money. I really want to have, you know, money for travel. I, I really just want to retire well. I want to feel comfortable and not stressed about money. Whatever that is that we're saying, those are great goals. But until we attach some very specific targets to those goals, even with health, health is a, a perfect example. We don't go in the gym and just say, I hope I get strong. I mean, you do, actually. But then as you're going to the gym, you're making decisions about how much weight you're lifting, how long you're running on the treadmill, you know, how much time you're going to put in, how many days a week you're going to go, what specific amount of you know, weight you're trying to get to, or how much weight you're trying to lose, or whatever it is. These are specifics. And without that, I would... I would place a good bet on the fact that the person who has these specific targets and knows what they are and is writing them down and tracking them and is is really focused on making these things work, that person, in my opinion, is bound to reach those goals faster and more effectively than the person who does not have the specific targets. And we tend to do that a lot um, with goals like health, I mean, goodness, all, every nutritionist out there is having you pay very specific attention to what you're eating and what's in it and how many calories and all of those things. 
for some reason, and maybe it's because we don't really want to look at our money. That's why I always talk about dating your money, spending time with it. And um, there's a either a fear factor or kind of a, a hopelessness around setting very specific money targets for some people, especially if they've never had the experience of, of kind of having what they want in that area. And so people tend to be vague and, and try to just hope for the best. You know, I, I, I'm going to save for a down payment on the house, and I hope it happens. I, my daughter really, really wants a house, so she's, she's saving her money for this future house. But she doesn't have specific goals for it. She doesn't, she's not saving uh, X amount or, or trying to get to X amount. Just hoping to get enough money. So these terms, like enough money... Uh, are just not specific enough to help us in the way we want to be helped. So that's really the gist of what I wanted to talk about. Um, money is with us all the time. We're thinking about it a lot. Um, you know, even even silly things. When I went on this trip on Friday, I had some work to do, and I was literally in the room doing you know some money things not not things i really was choosing to do um i was under a deadline with certain things and and i had to do certain things but it just proves how much of our our hours you know are spent thinking about money doing things with money paying attention to money and if we kind of embrace that with the right attitude and know that this is pushing us forward and and good for us um, I think we can settle into some routines around thinking about money and trying to get specific. Well, we can catch ourselves. You know, the, the earlier part of the conversation about this, whatever it is we're telling ourselves, we need to be super careful about that. But we can also be super aware of, you know, where am I telling myself things that are not specific they're too vague to be goals they're too vague for me to you know grab a hold of it and do something with it uh very specific and so once you have some more specific goals then you can reverse engineer and have some very specific action steps that you can take but if your goal is not specific your actions are going to be sort of fuzzy too so the whole thing just doesn't build the momentum that i'd love to see you have because when you start setting goals meeting them, taking, figuring out what actions you need to take, and then seeing them through and realizing them, that's very empowering. And then the next goal can be maybe a bigger one or just a different one. But you start to see how when you, when you, you know, you get to know specifically what you want, and you figure out how to get there, things happen. So that's really what I want to leave you with today. Uh, try it. Try spending some time in a different place, paying attention to what, you're, what comes up in your mind and keep asking yourself, is that a thought that's going to help me or is that a thought that might hold me back? And then look at your goals. Look at as you come up with these things that you want in life, make sure you have some specific ideas for what it is and start, you know, start somewhere. So if you're saying I want $100,000 of emergency savings in the bank, you don't know how the heck you could possibly do that right now, start with a lower number, but set that number with the bigger number in mind. We sometimes magic happens and by some crazy, you know, act of the divine, you're trying to save for 100, you set your goal for 10 and you end up with 25 for some a reason that you couldn't have expected. So that's my tip for today. Go for it. Spend some time with this and try to make it fun. Try to make it a, a, an enjoyable experience in your mind and let it realize in, in your life. Okay. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you next week.